Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to talk about the very first 100G motherboard for the AMD Epic SP3 CPUs. Here is the box and the motherboard is still on my test bench because I'm not yet done with the tests. The motherboard is good, but not perfect. In the past, whenever I do a positive review of a Huananji motherboard, there will be someone who would accuse me for being paid by Huananji. That's why in this video I'm going to start with some disclaimers. This particular motherboard I bought with my personal money and I tell you my personal opinion and my personal experience. Huananji has absolutely no influence and no value in saying what I'm allowed to say, what I'm not allowed to say, what I test and what I don't test. If you still don't trust this, then please watch my previous review of the LG3647 motherboard, which is Huananji X11 something. That motherboard was partially sponsored by Huananji, nevertheless, I completely thrashed the motherboard and I sent it back to China. AliExpress is a lottery and my experience with the motherboard is just one particular motherboard sample. I cannot guarantee that your motherboard is going to behave the same, I cannot guarantee that entire batch is the same. But from what I can hear from my subscribers who already bought one of these Huananji H12 motherboards, their board behaves exactly the same as mine and has exactly the same features. That's all I can say so far. It is also important to understand that this is a motherboard review. This is not a CPU benchmarking, even though I will include some benchmark numbers and some gaming results. With that being clear, let's go into the test results of Huananji H12D 8D motherboard for AMD Epic CPUs. The detailed technical specification of Huananji H12D 8D I have covered in my previous unboxing video. Here I will just add some extra important details. The motherboard indeed has 8 memory channels. We have 8 DR4 memory slots and 8 memory channels, so it is one slot per channel. Then in addition to 4 SATA 3.0 ports, we have 3 mini SAS ports. These are SFF8643 ports. Each of these 3 ports can be used either as a U2 NVMe PCI Express drive or it can be split into four additional SATA ports. The Ethernet adapters on the motherboard are indeed 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet, and these are Intel i226V. All PCI Express slots and all the M.2 slots support PCI Express 4.0, but if desired, it can be scaled back to 3.0 or even 2.0. The audio output on the motherboard comes from a generic USB adapter soldered straight onto the motherboard, so don't expect any marvelous sounds. And finally, there is a TPM header. The motherboard is compatible with the MSI TPM 12-pin SPI modules. I have bought my, tested it, and it works just fine. When it comes to the test results, it is easier to say what's not working with the motherboard than what's working. I have tested lots of different features and lots of different configurations, and everything works just as it should, except of a few things. Smart fan is unfortunately very limited, just as usual. We can use only 4 pin PWM fans and only with the two fan headers the CPU fan header and SYS1 header. The other headers will spin your fans at 100% speed. I also did not test with the mini SAS ports because right now I do not have SFF8643 cables. And it turns out that I have sold all my PCI Express 4.0 SSDs, thus the M.2 slots were tested with the PCI Express 3.0 SSDs. Nevertheless, in the BIOS there are settings for PCI Express 4.0, so I assume it works. All the PCI Express X16 slots I have tested and they all work at PCI Express 4.0 X16, they also do support PCI Express brofication, so this is good. The rest of the features are mostly working except of the sleep mode. So sleep mode is not working here as it is positioned as a server motherboard, so it's not kind of surprising but still annoying. RAM timings, resizable bar, clear CMOS, restore on power loss, those are working just fine. And people would be curious about the idle power consumption. Here I have a positive surprise for you. Testing with the NVIDIA GT710, 8 sticks of 32GB DDR4-2933 and 2 NVMe SSD drives installed, at idle my whole system consumed from the wall just about 50 watts, which is impressive. 
My Juana G H12DA D motherboard I have tested with AMD Epic 7282. The CPU supports memory speed up to DDR4 3200, but I have DDR4 2933 memory sticks. Juana G H12D gives me an opportunity to overclock my RAM, and much to my surprise, all my 8 32GB memory sticks booted at DDR4 3200 from the first try. Testing memory performance in 8064, you may think that the results are underwhelming because we get only about 70 GB per second read and 42 GB per second memory write. But in reality, this is exactly what you shall expect if you understand how these AMD Epic CPUs work. In short, these low end CPUs have only two CCDs and not all four of them. With just two CCDs, the CPU is choked to just four memory channels, even though the IO die itself still has eight memory connectors. For a detailed explanation of how this all works, please read an article linked in the video description. I have also tested non server standard desktop UDIM DDR4 memory, and it doesn't work on Huanan G H12D motherboard. I am not sure if it is AMD Epic's limitation or the motherboard's limitation, but the motherboard would not boot with the code 46. In Geekbench 6, I have scored 1300 and 11200 points which is a very decent score and higher than most of the scores of Epic 7282 on Geekbench website. In Cinebench R23, the scores are 960 and 18,135 points. In Cinebench 2024, Epic 7282 scores 56, 1051 points. I also ran Blender benchmark and here in total I got 258.2 points. Running ADA64 stress test for 30 minutes, I have registered maximum power consumption from the wall to be about 180 watts, and the maximum temperature I could register on the motherboard was about 55 degrees Celsius. So yeah, these Epic CPUs are much more power efficient than the Intel LGA3647 Xeons. And with just 180 watts from the wall, the VRM was not stressed enough to make any sorts of conclusion. At least we can say with a certainty that the low-end epics such as Epic 7282 is not a challenge for Huanan G H12D 8D motherboard. We all know that AMD Epic is not designed for gaming, still I tested a few games for you. At 1080p screen resolution with my RX 7900 XT, in Cyberpunk 2077 with high graphical preset and disabled ray tracing, we get about 792 FPS. It's a pretty low score, but from the good side we can see that the CPU maintains stable 3.2 GHz frequency and we do not have any massive frame drops. In F123, with high graphical preset at the same 1080p screen resolution, the performance is about 155-200 FPS. Again, it's not ideal, but it is totally playable. Finally, I also played a match of Counter-Strike 2 at a low graphical preset and FSR disabled. Here, Epic 7282 is only capable of 6635 FPS. A part of the test results and the benchmark numbers, I also have a bunch of important notes about Huanan G H12D 8D motherboard. Starting with the fact that the motherboard does not boot without a CMOS battery, and that was the mistake I did in my first video. I tried to boot the motherboard without the battery, and it would cycle and cycle and hang with the postcode 11. Second, the motherboard takes really long time to boot. It could take somewhere between 2 and 3 minutes from start to windows. And that means that entering the BIOS is very annoying, because while the motherboard is booting, you need to stand there and look at it and press the delete button right in time. The motherboard also does not have a speaker, so you don't know when it is actually booting to press the delete button right in time. You need to stand and guard it. On the more alarming side, I can say that Windows 11 does not work properly with auto-installed drivers. Also, installing official AMD drivers from the AMD website doesn't work either. If I attempt to install AMD drivers or Windows auto-installed drivers, then the system would lock and the motherboard would go into the postcode cycles. Only the official chipset drivers from the Huanan website work. 
Unfortunately, the website is very slow and sometimes it is not accessible from the Europe. So for that sake, I have duplicated the chipset drivers to my Microsoft OneDrive and if that's more convenient for you, you can download the drivers from there. My motherboard arrived to me with the BIOS version 1.3 and this is an outdated BIOS that does not have resizable bar support in the BIOS. The latest BIOS version 1.8 has a resizable bar, but the updating procedure is a bit complicated. For detailed video instructions on how to update the BIOS, please watch my another video. Huananji technical support on AliExpress basically doesn't exist. Their representatives are not technical people, they are salespeople which don't know anything, and all of the questions I asked or all of the problems I had, they had to translate into Chinese and send to their technician. Their technician then would answer some nonsense, which then would be translated into English and sent back to me. So everything I had, I had to figure out on my own. From the positive side, I can say that I really like that Huananji did not implement locking mechanism on the PCI Express slots. The slots themselves seem to be pretty strong and pretty firm, so these locking mechanisms are not really needed. And if you install several GPUs, it might be a nightmare to try to unlock your GPU from the PCI Express slot. The IPMI default username and password are admin admin, so if you plan to use IPMI and especially if you plan to have it connected to the internet, I strongly recommend you to change the password and probably also change the username to reduce the risk of someone connecting to your PC and hacking you. I have also tested the motherboard with just one 8-pin CPU power connector and it is working, but only if I connect the second CPU power. With just the first CPU power, the motherboard does not boot. Finally, I have to say that Huananji H12DAD is very friendly for multi-GPU configurations. I have tested four GPUs at the same time with the two RTX 3060, one Titan V and the one Arc B580. All the GPUs were detected, all the GPUs worked just as they should. For the conclusion of the part 1 testing of Huananji H12D 8D Epic motherboard, I can say that I was positively surprised. Yes, the motherboard is not perfect. We have the standard Chinese limitations such as non-working sleep mode, very limited smart fan and very long booting time. At the same time, the motherboard does not have any critical flaws, it has a very well-designed layout for multi-GPU configurations, it has 8 memory channels and lots of connectivity, including lots of SATA ports and 3 NVMe M.2 slots. So, if you can afford risking buying Chinese hardware and you have a use for such a server motherboard or workstation motherboard, then I could recommend Huananji H12D 8D as a viable alternative to other known brands. Of course, with the price tag of 400 euros without IPMI and 450 with IPMI, this Huananji H12 motherboard is not cheap at all. At the same time, Huananji H12D supports AMD Epic 2nd and 3rd generation CPUs. And if you're looking on eBay for alternatives with the 3rd gen CPU support, those are even more expensive. If the 3rd generation Epic support is not critical for you and you are fine with just 1st or 2nd gen, then there are other alternatives which could even be cheaper than Huananji H12D. Personally, I would much rather have this Huananji motherboard with a third generation Epic support than an old Supermicro from some used server with a just first or second gen Epic. For the second part of Huananji H12D motherboard testing, I will install Proxmox and verify server features, such as IO MMU groups, such as GPU pass through and the GPU split in virtualization, which is called SRRUV, I believe. And if that works, then this will be a perfect server motherboard. For now, though, that's all I have for you. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Stay tuned if you want more details, and bye for now.